Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at creating a massive ball of destruction. So, recently, not recently, I don't know how long it's been, but we created a cool iPhone app that allows you to turn people into demons um, using your phone. So, we created a cool promo video, and now I'm gonna show you how we did some of the effects. So, here's the effect we're gonna be taking a look at. Wow. So we've got this glass ball falling down, breaking into millions of pieces, and uh, we're going to be showing you exactly how I put this together. Now, we're going to be doing something a little different in terms of the tutorial. Usually, I try to create a tutorial that everyone can follow along with, but today, I'm going to try to focus on the actual workflow used to create this. So we're going to be using 3D Max, and we're going to jump into After Effects, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's actually going to be uh, a really great tutorial. So uh, definitely, definitely really great. Really not that good. The best way to think about it is that in a perfect world, how would I do something? Or, you know, if there weren't any limitations, like if I could fly, how would I get to work? Would I drive? Would I take the bus? Hell, if I could fly, would I even go to work? I'd probably go save people, you know, or fight crime. Probably just steal things. All right, let's go and get started. So we're going to be using 3ds Max, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Now we are going to be using an additional plugin for 3D Max, one called Rayfire. And uh, if you do a search, you'll see some information about it. Really cool plugin for doing some dynamics and simulations. So I'm going to show you exactly how to use it, and uh, we'll go from there. So first things we're going to do is create a box, and uh, there we go. Perfect. Now we're going to come over here, take a sphere, and let's put one right in the middle here. Maybe that big. That looks good. We'll give it about 64 segments. And uh, then I'm going to right click and uh, choose move and just drag it up here. So we're pretty much halfway there. I mean, if we look at the final video, it's pretty much. It's pretty close to being done. All right, so the next thing I want to do is create my simulation. So what I'm going to do is come over to the create. We're going to go down to Rayfire. And I'm going to open that up and open the Rayfire floater. Now, I'm using version 1.56, so it may be slightly different, but um, most of the stuff is pretty similar. All right, so this is the Rayfire plugin. And uh, it's really cool, really easy to use. We're going to go over to the objects, and I want to add our sphere into our dynamic impact object, because that's the thing we're actually going to break. Now, for our floor, I'm going to go ahead, take our floor, and add it into our static object. So we'll click Add. Now, one thing I want to do here is I want to set the material of the static object to be something like steel, something really hard. And then for our sphere, I'm going to change the material to something like glass. And that'll make sure the simulation is more accurate and uh, just helps us out overall. Um, first thing, let's take our box and come over to the modify and let's just make it a little bit larger to have a little more space to work with. All right, cool. Now, to run our simulation, we just come over here to physics. And before we run our simulation, I'm going to go down here to the bottom. And I want to turn on Interactive Demolition. So if we turn on Demolish Geometry, it's actually going to automatically break it based on it falling and hitting the ground. So if we come over here to the Fragmentation, we can set this to, you know, uh, Uniform is probably fine. We're going to set it to maybe 150 pieces. So then if we come to Physics, we can click on this record bake and uh, basically see what the animation looks like. So when it's done there, I'll just go ahead and hit pause. And I like to do it this way because then I can stop it and I can re-simulate it. Um, so we'll just move this out of the way for now. All right, so we have our simulation. So I'll hit Alt W, we'll zoom in here. We can scrub the time and we see the ball it's complete and then as it hits the ground we can actually see the ghost version of the ball so it automatically hides itself 
so that when it hits we can see the broken pieces so that's a really cool feature now if you're like me you'll probably want to render this out add some global illumination and then upload it on YouTube so people can see your first simulation um, and then when you're done we'll come back and uh, we'll finish up alright so we have our simulation here alright so we have our simulation here and uh, looks pretty great now I was just thinking a second ago what if everything we dropped just shattered into pieces you know you're just walking along you drop your keys and I think people would be a lot more careful for sure Anyhow, what we want to do is add a bunch of micro particles flying around everywhere. So what we need to do is create a particle system. We'll hit 6 and it's going to bring up our particle view. We'll right click, choose new particle system standard flow. So pretty standard. Um, what I'm going to do is change the position type to position object and uh, replace that and basically we want the particles to emit from our pieces of glass so we'll come over here click by list and we're gonna select all of the fragments so we'll click the first one drag down hold down shift select the last one and click select so if we come up to the top we're gonna click on lock on emitter and if we change the color we can actually see the particles now stuck to our pieces so if we go to the birth let's set that to 0 1 and maybe 500 particles so basically at frame 1 there's gonna be 500 particles total so now there's speed rotation um, all this we don't need that we'll just delete that I do want to create a collision event so we'll take that put it right above the display and we need something for our collision event to collide with so let's create a deflector so we'll hide that come over here to the create uh, we'll do space warp so we're gonna click on the deflectors and we're just gonna take the standard deflector and uh, we'll zoom out here and we're just gonna draw the deflector so perfect set the bounce to zero um, we'll go to the modify and what I want to do actually is change the name to activate because this deflector is actually just going to be used to activate our particles. So we'll hit 6, show you what I'm talking about. First, we'll add the deflector to our list. So we'll click List, Activate, Select. So uh, this is definitely getting somewhere. Now I'm going to move all this over. Now the idea here is once the particles come in contact with our deflector, they're actually going to move into another event, into another state. Let's move our deflector up just a bit. So go to about here, set a keyframe, auto key, and uh, just move forward a bit here. So basically, we're animating it as it hits the ground, and we probably just go all the way up with it. So once the particles come in contact with the deflector, we can then move them on into another event. So I'll hit N to shut off animate and hit 6 to bring up our particle view. So let's just add a display node out all by itself along with a speed node. And then we'll change the color from green to red. So then if we take our collision event and we'll feed it into our new event. So if we look, uh, let's see, I'll hit 6. If we look closely here we can see that the particles once they collide they turn red and they actually fall through the ground so not exactly what we want to have happen but we can see that they're taking on the new event attributes so let's go ahead and make some adjustments so we'll hit six come in here and uh, we want to add uh, a spin that'll make the particles go spinning maybe we'll add a shape instance so we'll bring that out now we also want the particles to bounce on the surface so what we want to do is add another collision event but anytime you have a collision you also need to have uh, like a gravity so we'll take a force and we'll drag that out so we don't have to think of all of these up front but these are a few that I know we're gonna need so 
We'll go close this, we'll hit six. Let's add another deflector. So we'll come in here, click deflector, and uh, we'll just make maybe a really big one. Now, I wanna go ahead and in the modify, turn the bounce down a little bit, 0.7, and turn the friction up a little bit as well. So that'll be good, hit six. Let's take the uh, collision and we'll add in that uh, new deflector that's not called activate and we'll hit select. And so now we're actually gonna start seeing the particles bouncing. Now, once they bounce once, we need something to bring them back down. So let's go ahead and add a force gravity. So we'll just click in here, make sure it's pointing downward and then we'll go back into the particle flow click on forces and add the gravity. So it seems kind of complicated perhaps, but just a lot of little steps that uh, you just have to run into and take care of. So now we can see the particles bounce. So they hit down and then they bounce. But we want them to be a little bit more exciting than that, so let's play around with the speed node. So right now the direction is along the arrow, which basically they're not going anywhere. So let's inherit the previous movement. So now if we move this out of the way, we can see as the particles hit down, they go flying everywhere because that's the motion of the pieces of glass. So that's kind of cool to start us out. But I'm thinking it's a little bit too fluid. So let's go into the speed. Let's add some variation. Let me see if I can adjust this so we can see it all at once. So we'll look at this event, that red is a little bit rough, so let's just set that to white. And maybe we'll just shut the display off in the first event and only display it once they are activated. So it's a little too fluid, so we'll go into the speed, and let's turn up the variation of these, so maybe like 100. Maybe we turn the speed down a little bit, so. And we also have some divergence. We're just gonna just move these around a little bit more. So this is looking pretty good. We have particles going and flying. Now, instead of little ticks, let's see if we can change that to something more useful. So we have our shape instancing on. Now, we can pick a group of pieces or we can just click one piece. So what I'm gonna do is click particle geometry and just click on one of these random pieces. So now what's gonna happen is, so if I go to the display, I'll set it from ticks to geometry. So now all of those little particles are actually pieces of glass. So if we go into the shape instance, we can scale them down so that they're, you know, micro pieces. And we can turn up the variation, you know, 90. And uh, that way we have a lot of pieces flying everywhere. And frankly, I think we need a lot more. So let's go back up to the birth event. and Let's turn that up to maybe 5,000. So now we have a lot more particles to work with and uh, they're really flying everywhere. So probably play around with the speed a little bit more. A little more variation. We can go into the collision event and let's just make it so that it bounces, collides, say, four times, and that way it'll stop after that. And maybe make the ground a little bit less bouncy and a little more friction. So if we look here, if we turn up that friction It'll make the radius a little bit smaller because no friction, they're gonna slide all over. But if we turn it up a little tighter, the particles won't go too crazy. So let's go ahead and save. And uh, this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and look at an animation. Let's go and set up the render settings. So this is the fun part. We're gonna go in here. We're actually gonna be using V-Ray and just set that up in the renderer. Um, it is a third-party renderer, but 
It's really powerful. They've been using it on a lot of movies lately, and it works with Cinema 4D and my and a bunch of other ones. So hopefully the settings will be uh, pretty similar. So first of all, let's set this to HD output. Uh, maybe for now we'll do half HD 960 by 540. And I'm going to come over here into the settings and we want to go into the environment and we want to set up the reflection map so in order to do this we need to set up a environment material so if we hit M it's gonna bring up our material editor and we'll click on one of the slots we'll add a material and we're gonna come down here to V-Ray HDRI and then we're gonna click in the bitmap here we're gonna browse and I have this warehouse HDR. Now it's not an exact match to the room, but I'm just going to add some nice reflections and we'll hit OK. And we're going to set this to spherical and we'll turn up the gamma a little bit. So you can kind of see what that is, kind of a cool looking room. So we'll close that, close this, and we're going to take this and drop it into the reflection channel. So we'll hit OK. And we can close that. Now we want to create a glass material. So we'll click on another slot and we'll click standard and we'll change this to V-Ray material. And uh, we'll hit OK. So the V-Ray material is going to have slightly different settings than the standard materials, but pretty similar types of things. So we'll call this glass. And to set up a glass, uh, I'll show the background here. We're just going to turn up uh, the reflectivity a little bit. And we might actually even add a fall off. So we'll hit OK. And you can kind of see what that does. We just add a little bit of, uh, you know, for now, kind of fall off. So that's good. We'll go up. And we're also going to turn on the refraction. So if we crank this up, can get a much more glass looking uh, material. So now let's go ahead and apply this to our object. So we'll select all of the stuff here, drop our glass piece, assign to selection, and uh, there we go. Now I also want to set up my background. So if we come over here to my original project file, I have a ground image so we can see um, you know where the ball is going to hit the ground and shatter so we'll take this and we can just drag it right into the environment and we can set it as a background and an environment map so in this case we'll just hit OK and now we can really start seeing what the shots going to look like now I can also click in here let's see uh, show safe frame and that will basically give us the guides to keep us within that HD so kind of uh, kind of helpful. Now one thing I want to do is set up a material that allows shadows to be cast on the ground. So usually we call it a matte shadow material. In Cinema 4D it's called like a shadow catching material. So to do that we're gonna create um, a special material. So click on here and we're gonna change it to a special material called V-Ray Material Wrapper. And we'll hit OK and we'll keep the old material as a submap and we just have to do a couple of things. We want to mat the surface so we want to create a mat from the actual surface and we want the alpha contribution to be negative one and we want to collect the shadows and affect the alpha. So we basically just turn on all this stuff set that to negative one. So now if we drop this on our box or our floor layer um, what's going to happen is if I do a quick test render so I'll hit uh, F9 we can see that the glass is rendering but we no longer see that ground layer so this is going to be really helpful for later so we have the alpha channel that we need uh, for compositing so we'll go ahead and close that now I can take this gray layer now and just go right click let's see, and do object properties and we can make it maybe see through just for the sake of being able to see uh, the rest of this scene. Um, so the pieces are going to fall down. We might move the camera in a little closer and maybe zoom it out a little bit. 
we just really want to be in the middle of all of this uh, action. So looks pretty good. All right, so we've got the glass pieces falling. Probably need a little bit of lighting. So let's go click on the lights. We'll go to V-Ray lights and I'll click on this one here. And in the top view, we're just going to add an overhead light. So this is what it looks like, maybe about that size. And then in the top view, we'll just drag it up a little taller. So now we need to go ahead and start playing around with the way that this looks. So we can come in here and see exactly how this is going to look. So we'll hit F9. Let's go ahead and size it down a bit. It seems really big when you're working at such a small resolution. So we'll do 640. F9. All right, so this is going to give us a few things to think about. First, the color of the glass, the reflectivity, and uh, some of the material settings that we've chosen to start with. So another thing we can do is we can go to the simulation and shut off all the extra pieces and basically just focus on this main set of, uh, of particles. And this maybe will help things render a little faster. We can also shut off the cast shadows while we work just to kind of get things going. So first thing we need to go into the materials and I might even change the color of the light to match the room a little bit. So I might just click a warm color here, turn it up. But remember we're going to separate this path so we can also do color correction and a lot of other things later on that are going to really help you know define what this shot looks like. So Another thing I may turn up the gamma for this uh, reflection map and it may help uh, brighten up the reflection as well. Okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good um, you know for a first little pass. Let's hit six and turn on those uh, micro particles again. and uh, let's take a look as it uh, first impacts. This is looking good, but remember, we want this shot to be super slow motion. So in order to do that, we need to render out a really high number of frames. So we need to over crank our render. So in order to do that, we want to come over here to the time controls and we're going to go to custom and we're going to type in a crazy amount, like say 480 frames per second and go higher to make it even slower and uh, we'll hit OK. So now our active time range is actually going to change to a lot higher of a value and another thing we want to keep track of is our activating particle system. So if we move in here we're going to see that our particles are going to be a little bit slower to react and you know that may be OK. But if we want to make any changes, we just go into the uh, settings and uh, do that. But let's just take a look at what this is going to look like. So if we go back just a little bit before it breaks, maybe about frame 530, we can go animation, make preview, and we'll set a custom range. So we'll do say 530 by maybe 7, you know, 650. Now we want to go ahead and We'll set that to 100%, but we want to play back at 24 frames per second. So I'll just do uncompressed and create, let's see. All right, so this is the basic simulation here, and it's kind of giving us an idea of what's going on. We can play around with the different settings and uh, when you're dealing with a project like this where it's going to take a long time to render, you really want to make sure that you get it right in the viewports and in the animation previews so that you're not spending a lot of time re-rendering stuff and, and getting things perfectly dialed in. So let's go and set this up to render. Now we could probably work on it a little bit more but I think we're pretty close. Alright so let's go and set this up to render. Now I want to go and render say frame 480 all the way till about 
720. So we'll come up here, click on the render settings. We'll type 480 to about 720. And we'll come down here, click on file. And let's just save this, uh, shatter version one. And we're gonna use the open EXR format. And if we go up to the setup, we can pretty much leave it as default, but this is gonna be a 32 bit per channel format. So that'd be really helpful. And then we wanna add a Z pass. So we'll click add, come down here to Z depth and okay. So it should be good in the 32 bit channel to give us enough of that information. So this is pretty good. Um, Make sure we set this to full HD and uh, we'll click render. It may take a little while, so I'll be back in a bit. All right, so the fun continues. We're going to be jumping into After Effects here and I've imported our render. Now, instead of using the render that we just created, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the original render from the shot. And, uh, you know, what you're going to do is you're going to import the sequence. So just grab one of the images set it to EXR sequence and that'll bring it in as a movie file and what we're going to do is we're going to right click and choose interpret footage main and we're going to set the color management to preserve RGB and this just helps bring the color space um, into range for a standard sort of After Effects workflow and we're also going to set it to straight unmatted. Now I'm also going to go to the Z pass so we have our glass footage and our Z pass. We're going to right click on the pass and choose uh, interpret footage main. Also, we'll set it to preserve RGB. And for this one, we're actually going to set it to ignore the alpha channel. And also, I want to make sure I set the frame rate to uh, 23.976. And uh, likewise for our glass footage. So this is uh, the idea. So we'll take our glass and we'll drop it into a new comp. So make some space here. Now the shot that we just created actually doesn't have the pieces of glass inside of the ball until it actually hits down. So originally I just sort of fixed that by using a second render of the ball and just kind of composited it together. So in this case I'll just ignore that but uh, you know, you shouldn't have that problem if you follow along with the previous step. So, all right, so we have this. We have our ground background layer. So, we'll drop that in. So, we'll put that below it. And basically, we're done. No. Um, we have this uh, Z pass also. So, let's drag that out. And uh, that looks pretty good. Now, if it's out of range, so if it doesn't quite look right, go over into 32 bits per channel. So, hold down Alt click until you get to 32 bits per channel and then take the exposure effect and just adjust it until you get the right uh, exposure to where it kind of looks like this and there's some various depth to the layer so perfect now we can start doing some stuff we can do some stuff out of order but ultimately we have to do it all so let's just uh, get started I'm going to create an adjustment layer and this is going to be our depth of field. So we'll hit return, type in DOF. And I like to use a plugin called Depth of Field. So really cool. It is, again, a third party plugin. Um, I know that in CS 5.5, you can use the lens blur or the camera lens blur or something like that. And it works very similarly. Um, but uh, this is a really popular one. So check that out. I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to say it. I don't need to say that kind of stuff to embarrass myself. I can do it all by myself. Um, so I'm going to set the depth layer to the V-Ray Z-Depth Pass. And the way the plugin works is you can turn up the depth of field amount. So we can set it to like 100. And so everything goes out of focus. And then we can select the point we want to be in focus. So if we look here and maybe move this point around, we can actually sort of rack focus to the pieces that are up front. Um, and we can also animate this by animating the focal point. So this is actually how it was done in the original example. So we would rack focus on a piece that comes to the camera and then it turns into uh, the, uh, the lens. So kind of a cool little 
uh, trick there and also just makes the background seem more mysterious because you can't quite see what's going on. So that is the depth of field. Now it's really slow, so we're gonna shut it off for now, but I'm glad it's set up. And another thing we may set up here early on is uh, just some quick color correction. So create another adjustment layer, we'll hit return, hit CC, and we'll choose effect, uh, color correction. I like to add a tint and uh, curves adjustment. So pretty standard, we'll just bring some of the saturation in this. I mean, it's a pretty dark shot anyway, so you know, we can add a little contrast. Probably don't want to have a lot of red in this because it's supposed to be nighttime. So just play with it a little bit. Maybe brighten the shot up a little bit in the neutral. Now, I want to create a really big shock wave. So, like a, a displacement map for a shock wave. So, the way we can do that, so make sure we save, is uh, we can create a new solid and we'll make it white and I also want to make it square. So we'll make it 1920 by 1920. And then we'll take uh, the ellipse tool and we'll click in the middle and we're just going to create a sphere uh, like that, so or a circle. What I'm going to do is hit uh, M, click on the stopwatch for the mask path and we'll solo just this layer. And we'll hit MM and maybe we'll actually set a keyframe for the mask expansion. We'll set the expansion down to a really, really low amount. And then we'll move forward just a couple seconds and we'll crank up the expansion. There we go. And then we'll duplicate the mask. So we'll hit edit, duplicate. So now we have two of those. And we'll set the second one to subtract. Now, we're gonna have to do something here. So let's zoom in. Let's offset the second one um, just a little bit. And that way, it creates a, a bit of a ring. And then at the very end, let's just make sure that we wipe it out entirely. And we can, of course, we can feather this a bit. Again, I'll just make sure we wipe it out entirely at the end there. So perfect. Now look at this. Uh, we'll come over here and we'll type in roughen uh, edges and we'll drop that onto our solid. So now we've got a cool looking effect there. Maybe we'll slide this over, make it a little thicker and we can turn the sharpness down just a bit. So this looks pretty good for our shockwave. So what I'm going to do is pre-compose this. So we'll just trim the layer. Um, um, sorry, what I did there was I hit Alt Begin Bracket to trim it. And then I hit Alt Home, which brings it to the beginning of the comp. And then I can pre-compose it by just choosing Layer Pre-Compose and um, we're going to move all the attributes into the new comp. Uh, but one thing I want to do is because it goes out of the frame, let's go to the comp setting and set it to 1920 again. So that way it'll be full frame the whole time. Cool. All right, so we'll come back to our comp. We'll unsolo the shockwave and let's set it to be a 3D layer. So now if we zoom in, we can take the rotation tool and flatten it down here a bit. Let's see. The glass is going to hit down about here. And we'll move the shockwave over to about that point in time. Maybe that's a little fast. So let's go in here, hit U. If we select all the keyframes, we can hold Alt, click the last keyframe and drag it over and that will actually slow it down a bit. So I don't know that we need it to be that much slower, but maybe a little slower. Okay, so that's what we want. Now I do want to pre-compose it and we'll move all the attributes. And we'll call this Shockwave. And we'll open it up and I just want to create a quick background solid. So 
we'll set it to 50% gray. So we could do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And uh, this will work perfectly for a displacement map. So we'll come back into our final comp and we'll go ahead and shut the displacement layer off. And I'm gonna create another adjustment layer. And this one's gonna be called displace. And we're gonna type in displacement. We're going to take the displacement map plugin and drop it onto our adjustment layer. Then we'll select the shockwave layer and let's bring it down just above the ground. So we can just solo those two layers. So if we look at this, See right there, we can start to see this shock wave kind of take over that ground. I think the idea is just to kind of be able to see it break across. So as it hits down, um, let me see if we can watch a little bit of this. One thing I like to do is set the preview to like skip four frames and then set the frame rate really high. So it won't really be choppy anymore. I'll just play back at a faster frame rate. All right, so let's take a look here. So as it hits, we can see the shock wave kind of slide off. We're not looking at it in real time, so you know we don't want to make too many changes, but possibly we could slide this over a little bit so it happens a little bit sooner. There we go. Maybe even sooner than that. So that's pretty cool. You know, we can scale that up and make it more intense, but I think that's good just for the basic idea of creating a ground shock wave. And we can, you know, we can crank that up and then fade the value out. Now we're going to be compositing another pass, which is kind of a smoke pass. So we'll take this fume effects pass that we created. Now I didn't go over this just because it's a little bit um, intense, but you can do some cool tutorials for fume effects, but you can also just use some effects that come with the Action Essentials collection um, that are a little bit easier to use and might work uh, just as well. So we're going to color correct this uh, fume effects pass, maybe make it smoke colored or like dust almost. And uh, then we'll take a look. All right, so this may be a little closer to the real-time speed. So it's extremely slow. We want to make sure that we, you know, time our effects and everything to go with that much slower rate. So pretty good. Let's go ahead and add another kind of a lens flare effect. Um, you know, there's a couple of ways that I actually did this initially. Um, we can take uh, a new solid. And we could just call this a lens flare. And we'll just type in optical flares. And uh, we'll put that on our solid here. Now, optical flares is uh, our plugin uh, for creating uh, lens flares and things. So let's go into the options here. Now, there's a couple of different ideas. So there's some really cool light presets that come with, uh, with the plugin. Um, we can do a really cool looking lens flare or we can actually do something more uh, more simple so if we come over here I don't have a lot of room actually but if we go to the objects we can add something like a lens orb and so that kind of creates some specs on the lens and if we go to the global parameters we can even add uh, you know a texture so um, you know I don't know if any of you guys have noticed but I think this texture, um, or one of these, is actually in the new Battlefield game. So while I was doing some research, flying helicopters and stuff, I, uh, I happened to come across that and notice, and uh, hey, it's pretty cool actually. So I still had to pay for the game, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, all right, so we'll hit OK. 
and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll keyframe this on to kind of light up our scene. So we'll set the transfer mode to add and we'll move this down here and basically I just want to turn the brightness up and down so we want it to kind of come on exactly when this explodes and then really fade off uh, you know nicely and another thing I probably want to add a little contrast to this I think and then maybe give it a slightly more gold tone Now that I'm looking at the surface area, I might go into the options again and add just like a quick streak. And that way it kind of fills that, that, that area of where it actually impacts. All right, so let's go and turn our depth of field back on. So we'll put this right here. We'll turn our depth of field on. Probably want to set the focal point then maybe keyframe the focal point uh, as we get a little larger and maybe you know make it come forward a bit so pretty cool maybe put the color correction above the flare and um, this is going to take a little while, but maybe we could take a look. And another thing, too, I noticed the glass is kind of blue-looking instead of gold-looking. So since it's a separate layer, let's see right here, we can actually go in and color correct it all by itself. So we could brighten it. Um, we could take some of that blue out of it. You know, maybe make it a little more gold-colored. So it's really cool when you work with separate pieces like that because then you can really refine it and uh, and make it look the way you want or you can mess it up and make it look a lot worse than it was a second ago but either way I think just being able to have that option is uh, just really really meaningful not really um, alright a little more contrast cool so let's just take a quick look and uh, see where we're at. Looks pretty cool. I probably wouldn't, you know, use that lens flare so bright. I think it's actually really cool seeing the pieces kind of break up. So we might, you know, turn that down just a little bit. Either way, um, I think the idea is cool. And here's kind of the final shot. So uh, pretty cool. I know, I guess you can kind of see the glow is a little bit more based on the geometry and it just kind of has a mask that highlights around that area. Um, and also, I guess I did a little glow on the ground as well. So that was just a simple mask that, you know, just like the shock wave was sort of a color mask. And uh, I think we uh, got all the points across and... Uh, Hopefully you guys can kind of see what went into the shot. And uh, again, I know I got into a lot of programs and software and things that I know not everyone has, but I just want to be able to show you guys uh, my workflow and uh, just start giving you guys some ideas for how you can put all these different parts together. And maybe you know a cool plugin or software or something that you use to get your stuff done. So please come check out the forum, you know, share some thoughts, some ideas. And uh, of course the blog, got a lot of great things there. Anyway, my name is Andrew Kramer. We will see you next time.